Hello guys and welcome to this two-part tutorial series where I'm going to be showing you step-by-step -step how to make a super satisfying candy simulation in Blender. You can see this is the result here. I'm going to show you everything from the default opening scene of Blender all the way through to the simulation, modeling, the materials and rendering it all out as a final animation. It's pretty beginner friendly and I will be making the blend files available on my Patreon. You can check that in the description below. So like I said, this is part one. We'll be covering the modeling, the simulation and the scene. And then in part two, we're gonna cover the materials and the lighting and I'm gonna show you how to render this out as a final animation. So without wasting any more of your time, Let's get into this little tutorial. We have a fresh scene open up in Blender. Hit A to select all of the default objects and then we're gonna hit delete on our keyboard. Now we have a nice empty scene to get started with. So we're gonna go Shift A and we're gonna go to our mesh options and we're gonna go down to cylinder. Once we've added in a cylinder, we're gonna go into our front view. And let's just tab into edit mode and with all of the geometry active, we're gonna go G, Z and we're gonna move it up till it's sitting on the floor. Don't be too precise about it. As long as it's just nicely rested on the floor, it should be fine. So let's go over to our edge select option and deselect everything and let's go shift alt and just click on the edge at the bottom, holding in shift and alt and you're gonna see it loop select. And then we're gonna go control B and we're gonna make a bevel. So control B and we're gonna roll the middle mouse button just once just to create a nice little bevel on our jar like that. Deselect and then shift alt, click on the edge at the top to loop select it. And let's go E to extrude, we're gonna extrude it up. And I'm gonna to go to about here, I'm gonna go S to scale it just a little bit. And maybe move it down just a bit, something like that. And I'm gonna go E to extrude it up. And then we're gonna go S just to scale it, just to create this kind of lip, and like so. And then we're gonna go X and we're gonna delete that face while it's active. So we're lacking a little bit of geometry here. So let's go Control R, have, hovering over one of these edges, and just roll the middle mouse button a few times so we get some extra geometry and just double click and that should be added in. And now let's go to our modifiers and let's go Add Modifier and let's give it a subdivision surface modifier to smooth things out a bit. So let's tab out and let's go into object mode and that's what we should have. So let's go to object and just go shade smooth. Okay, that's looking pretty cool but it's paper fin. So let's actually go add modifier and let's give this a solidify modifier. And what we're gonna do here, we can do two things. We can go into the positives or we can go into the negatives. For me, I'm gonna go into the negatives just a little bit like that. So we have a little bit of thickness to the jar. And then what we're gonna do, and this is optional, um, but we can come here to our sub div and make sure both of these are set to one. And then we're gonna go add, and we're gonna add another subdiv modifier and set these both to one on top of it. And I have a reason for doing it. I want it to be smooth with the first subdiv before it does the solidify, and then I want it to add another subdiv on top of that. So I've just got that happening there. You can come in here in edit mode at any time you want. And um, you can also come here and put on the cage display so you can see things. So just click on it. Go to face select and you can select any of these ugly bits and just go E to extrude, S to scale, bring them in a little bit, make it your jar, whatever you wanna do. So for now, I'm just gonna leave it at that. I'm also gonna go Shift A, I'm just gonna add in a quick torus, tap into edit mode, and with all of that active, just simply go Alt S, and that's just gonna scale it in on a normal. So Alt S and just make it a bit skinnier. Tab out into object mode again. So we're now in the object view. And we're gonna go G, Z, I'm gonna move that ring up to the lip here. And this is actually optional, but I think it really adds to this. And we're gonna go S, and you just scale it to make sure it's nice and on that border there. Go to object mode and give that a shade smooth. Go to your modifiers and just give it a subdiv modifier here as well, just to smooth things out. Now later on, we are gonna grab this guy and just give it a nice material. I don't know, it just adds a little feature to this jar that I really like. So let's quickly also model our jar lid. You don't have to, but I think a little lid coming down is quite nice. So let's quickly go in and um, quite simply, just go to vertex select. I'm just gonna go into my front view and in wireframe, I'm just gonna drag and select these verts. Shift D to duplicate and just bring them up just slightly. And then S to scale it just a little bit, bring it down. And then we're gonna go E to extrude and S to scale. Oops. S to scale like that. And 
just select this loop here again, this loop of verts, and just bring it down a little bit. So just in like that, select this inner loop again, and now just bring it up. So just making a nice little jar, and then E to extrude S to scale. Bring it into about there. Bring it up a little bit. And then E to extrude, bring it up. S to scale a little bit. And all we're trying to do is just make this little lid at the top. So this can be as stylized or as unique as you want it to be. For me, I'm just gonna go with something like this. Extrude it up one more time, S to scale. And we're just creating this little nub at the top where you would be grabbing the jar and then just go F to fill it in and then E to extrude, S to scale and just scale that in. So we're just making this nice little bit at the top. While we have those verts active, we're gonna hit Control L and that's gonna select all of the loose geometry within this edit mode. And we're gonna hit P and we're gonna go separate selection. Then let's tab back into our object mode. And now if we select this lid, we can see it's its own object. Make sure to go object and enable shade smooth with that active as well. So um, spend as much time as you want with the lid to get it just perfect. Um, scale it up, whatever, but it should have the same modifier properties, which is really cool. So that's what we're gonna be animating a bit later. So let's quickly go Shift A, add in a quick plane and scale it up nice and big. And now, if you've scaled anything like any objects here, make sure you select them and you go Control A and apply the scale, just to do with our physics later on. And what we're also gonna do, we're just gonna select the jar here, the lid, and we're gonna go G, Z, and just move it up for now and out of our way. We'll get back to that in a little bit. So for now, we're gonna select our jar. We're gonna go over to our physics, give it a rigid body, and let's make it passive. And let's come here and make the shape mesh. And let's just come over to our sensitivity and let's just make this margin smaller. So when our candies fall in the jar, um, they're not gonna be like having too much space between the candies and the jar. So we're gonna go 0 0.02 or 0 0.01. Kind of just play around with it a little bit. So now we can actually make the candies. So let's go Shift A, make a sphere. And I don't want this to be too high poly for simulation purposes. So I'm gonna make mine 22 and the segments and then the rings, I'm gonna make it um, 15, like so. Then I'm gonna go G, Z, I'm gonna move this up. Go to object mode and enable shade smooth. And because I don't wanna keep adding the material to each duplication, I'm just gonna go and just add a placeholder material for this candy. So I'm gonna go new. I'm just gonna call it candy. And I'm gonna go S just to scale this down. Now you can make these as big or as small as you want to. I'm just gonna go with something like that. It's a little bit bigger than the marble. Control A and make sure to apply the scale. So I'm gonna say that twice. If you scaled anything, you're gonna add physics to, make sure to go Control A or Command A and apply that vector, which is the scale in that case. We're now gonna to go to our physics and we're gonna give it a rigid body. We're gonna make the type active, so make sure it stays at active and leave it at convex hole. But with the margin here, under the sensitivity, we'll make it 0 0.02 as well. So now if we go over here in our timeline and make sure you're on frame one, hit your space bar and your ball should fall into your jar. So how cool is that? So if you go into wireframe, you can see it's sitting in there. Cool, I might just um, scale it up just a tiny bit, control A and apply that scale. So now let's go back to frame one. Okay, so make sure you're back to frame one. Oops, what's going on here? I think because I scaled it and I applied the scale, um, it's left it there. So just make sure on frame one, you bring it all the way up to about here. So that needs to be on frame one. And then what we're gonna do, in our top view, we're gonna go Shift D and we're gonna just duplicate this ball a few times, okay? So I know you can't see it at the moment because our lid's in the way, but we just wanna duplicate it and make sure none of them are intersecting with each other. So just like that, so you can see I got these balls here. I'm gonna select them, go to my front view, I'm gonna go Shift D, Z and move them up. And then I'm gonna go Shift R just to repeat that action a few times. So I'm gonna make about this many candies. And now if we hit the space bar on frame one, we're gonna see they fall into the jar. How cool is that? So let's quickly go over to our scene properties. Go to rigid body and let's just quickly untick this. And the reason we want to do that is while we're doing the lid animation, we don't want to 
let this get in the way. So let's safely assume that at about frame 50 or 60 they've all fallen in. So let's go to frame 55. And on frame 55 we're going to grab this lid and we're going to go G, Z and bring it down till it's resting on the top of our jar, like that. And then we're going to hit I and we're going to insert a location frame. So hit I and insert a location frame on 55. And then we're just going to come to frame 30 and we're going to go G, Z and move it up above everything. And then we're going to go I and insert a location keyframe. So what we should see, if we go to frame one and we hit the space bar, is this. Pretty cool. So now let's turn our, go to our scene properties and let's just enable rigid body world again. And let's go to frame one and let's just hit space bar and let's see what this animation looks like. And then the lid comes down. How cool is that? So let's quickly add in a camera to our scene. So um, do this however you want. I'm just gonna go Shift A, add in a quick camera. With the camera active, you can see in the collection, we're gonna hit zero to go into camera view. And then G, middle mouse button, and then pull your mouse back just to zoom out. So I'm gonna place mine about here. Go to your camera settings. Let's make the focal length 120. Let's go to our camera output and let's just make the resolution 1080 at the top. And now you can adjust your camera however you want. So I'm just gonna place it just like that. So if we now go over here to our end value on our timeline, we can also make it 100. So this animation is only gonna be four seconds long. So you can see here, only 100 frames and then it'll close us. Now, one very important thing, if you wanna render this out as an animation, you do need to um, bake the simulation. So let's go over to our scene properties and under the rigid body world, go to your cache and make sure that your simulation start time is one and your end frame value is something like 90. Essentially what it's saying from frame one to frame 90, it's gonna be doing that simulation and after that point, it's not gonna do it. We're then gonna make sure we save our file. So I'm gonna just save mine to my desktop very important before we simulate. And then you're gonna click bake. And now watch that bake. And there we have it, it's now baked in, make sure to save it. So now we have our actual um, animation here. And we're not making it loopable, this is the animation, but it looks really cool. It's very satisfying to look at. So what we're gonna do in part two, which you can check out on my channel, is we're gonna be doing the materials and the lighting for this. And I'll show you how to render this out as a final animation. I hope you guys enjoyed this part one, and as always, I do make these files available on my Patreon.